Professor Dave and Chegg here. Earlier we learned about oxidation reduction reactions, or redox reactions. We defined some terminology and we learned about oxidation numbers, but now it is time to do something a bit more complicated with redox reactions. We have to know how to balance these reactions, and doing so will be much more involved than balancing more typical chemical reactions. Let's learn this algorithm now. We know that redox reactions are reactions in which electron transfer occurs. One substance is oxidized, which means it loses electrons, and another substance is reduced, meaning it gains electrons, which will occur when these electrons are transferred from one substance to another. Sometimes redox reactions are very simple, where a neutral metal atom is oxidized to become a metal cation when it transfers electrons to some other metal cation to form a different neutral metal. These reactions are easy to balance because we simply need to make sure that the charges are balanced by adding electrons and coefficients if necessary. But redox reactions can become more complicated if molecules of solvent are involved in the chemical reaction, as water molecules can be if the reaction is carried out in aqueous solution. Hydrogen atoms or oxygen atoms from water molecules can be incorporated into these substances, which will make it a little trickier to balance the corresponding equations. Let's learn how to balance these kinds of redox reactions now, considering both acidic and basic conditions, as the approach will differ slightly for these scenarios. For example, in aqueous solution, the dichromate ion will react with iron 2 to yield chromium 3 and iron 3. How do we balance this? The first step is to split this up into half reactions. For the oxidation half reaction, iron 2 becomes iron 3. This is the oxidation half reaction because the ion has lost another electron. For the reduction half reaction, dichromate becomes chromium 3. We can see by looking at the oxidation numbers for chromium that it has been reduced. Now we must balance each half reaction, starting with elements other than hydrogen or oxygen. We can see that for the reduction, we need to put a 2 here to get two chromium atoms on each side. Next, we balance oxygen by adding water molecules. We have seven oxygen atoms on the left, so we need to add seven water molecules to the right, since there is one oxygen per molecule. Now we can balance hydrogen atoms by adding hydrogen ions. Since there are 14 hydrogen atoms on the right from the seven water molecules, we will need 14 hydrogen ions on the left. This means all of the elements are balanced. Now we can balance the electrical charge for each half reaction by adding electrons. In the oxidation, in order for iron 2 to become iron 3, it must lose an electron, so there must be one electron as a product here. For the reduction, it's a little trickier. We have 2 minus on the dichromate and 14 H pluses for a total of 12 plus on the left. On the right, we have 2 chromium 3 ions for a total of 6 plus. In order to balance this, we will need 6 electrons on the left to bring the charge down to 6 plus and balance the charge. Now we will need to combine these in such a way so as to cancel out the electrons. That means we will have to multiply this half reaction by 6 in order to get 6 electrons to match the other half reaction. So 6 of each iron ion and the 6 electrons we need. Now we can finally combine these half reactions. Once they are combined, we can cancel out any species that appear on both sides, which in this case is just the electrons. So we can now see the exact number of ions that must react in order to produce this particular redox reaction. Let's make sure to realize that this is the algorithm we can use under acidic conditions, which is why hydrogen ions are present. If this is occurring under basic conditions, the algorithm will be just a little bit different, but it will start out by balancing as though we are under acidic conditions. So let's do that first, just as we have learned. Let's say we have solid silver reacting with zinc 2 plus to become silver oxide and solid zinc. Again, we will start by separating this into half reactions. Silver has been oxidized, going from 0 to plus 1, and zinc has been reduced, going from plus 2 to 0. Then, just as before, we balance elements other than hydrogen and oxygen. That will involve placing a 2 here before solid silver. Next, we balance oxygen with water molecules. That means 1 on the left here. Then we balance hydrogens with protons, which means 2 on the right here. Then we balance charge by including electrons. That means 2 on the right for this one, and 2 on the left for this one. 
Because the number of electrons in each half reaction is equal, we can go ahead and combine them, cancel out the electrons, and we get this. If conditions were acidic, we would be finished, but since they are basic, there is a little more work to do, because it doesn't make sense to say that protons exist in basic solution. First, we note how many protons there are, and we add that number of hydroxides to both sides, so that's two hydroxides on each side. Then, anywhere we see protons and hydroxides, we can combine these to form water molecules, so that makes two waters on the right. Then we cancel any like terms that remain. In this case, we can eliminate one water molecule from both sides. And this will be the balanced redox reaction under basic conditions, with hydroxides listed instead of protons. We can see that in either case, we are involving solvent molecules in order to supply the hydrogens and oxygens necessary for the reaction, and we simply follow a series of steps in order to balance all the components involved. Here is that list of steps summarized one more time, in case you need these instructions for reference, with instructions for acidic conditions listed first, and then the continuation if conditions are basic. Let's try one more example. Consider the following redox reaction involving the permanganate ion and iron 2 plus, going to manganese 2 plus and iron 3 plus. First we have to recognize what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. Iron goes from the 2 plus ion to the 3 plus ion, which means it is losing an electron and therefore being oxidized. So the oxidation half reaction describes this oxidation. Then for permanganate, if we recall our rules for assigning oxidation numbers, manganese goes from a plus 7 oxidation state to a plus 2, so manganese has been reduced, making this the reduction half reaction. Now from here, we have to balance any element that might be present other than the elements that are specifically getting oxidized or reduced by adding water molecules or hydrogen ions. The oxidation half reaction looks good, but in the reduction half reaction, we have oxygen atoms on the left, but no oxygen on the right. Those oxygens had to go somewhere, and in fact, they become water molecules. So let's take the reduction half reaction, and first we can add four water molecules on the right side. Now we have four oxygen atoms on each side, and oxygen is balanced. But in doing so, we have added eight hydrogen atoms to the right. That means we have to add eight hydrogen ions on the left. Now all the elements are balanced. Now the only thing left to balance is the electrical charge, which we can do with electrons. On the left, we have one minus from the permanganate ion and eight protons for a total of plus eight. That means we have a plus seven charge on the left. On the right, we have just the plus two on the manganese ion. That means we need five electrons on the left side for the charges to even out, because positive seven plus negative five will equal positive two. Now the reduction half reaction is totally balanced. For the oxidation half reaction, we have to add electrons as well, so let's recall what that looked like. And since the iron 2 plus ion loses one electron to become iron 3 plus, we need to put an electron on the right side to balance out the charge. Now the half reactions are completely balanced. Next, we will want to combine the half reactions, but in order to do so, we need the electrons in each to match up, since the electrons lost in the oxidation are the ones that are used in the reduction. Since there are five electrons in the reduction, we have to multiply the oxidation by five to get the five electrons. Now we are ready to combine them, so we just take everything on the left side of both half reactions and put that on the left, and everything on the right side of both half reactions and put that on the right, without the electrons of course, since five on each side means they will cancel out. If we check any element or the overall charge, we will see that it is balanced, which means this is the balanced redox reaction under acidic conditions. Let's finish this off by balancing under basic conditions just to be thorough. As we know, this first involves getting rid of the hydrogen ions by adding that same number of hydroxide ions to both sides. So here, that's eight hydroxides on each side, and on the left, the protons and hydroxides give us eight waters. Next, we cancel out some waters. There are four on the right, so we can get rid of four on both sides, leaving four on the left and none on the right. And that's all there is to it. This is now balanced under basic conditions. In summary, to balance a redox reaction in acidic conditions, we first split it up into half reactions. Then, if there are unbalanced oxygen atoms, we add water molecules. If there are then unbalanced hydrogens, we add hydrogen ions. Then we balance the charge by adding electrons. 
we make sure the half reactions have the same number of electrons by multiplying one or both of them by some coefficient, and then we combine them to get the overall redox reaction. That completes the balancing for acidic conditions. If we need it under basic conditions, we just add enough hydroxide ions to both sides to cancel out any hydrogen ions, and then we cancel out as many waters as possible. That may have seemed a bit daunting, but the algorithm will be exactly the same every time. So hopefully now, after several examples, we have a solid grasp of how to balance redox reactions. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.